The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. Friday morning, 8.30 a.m., 60 minutes to go until that opening bell, and we got markets in positive territory to kick off Friday trading. Right now, you're looking at an S&P futures positive by 20 points, trading at 32.15. NASDAQ futures up 110, 10,621. We got the Dow futures up 165, 26,718. Oil, negative 19 cents, but holding up relatively well within about a quarter of $41, trading at 40.74. We've got the gold contract right now, up nine dollars at 1809 look at that acceleration so where we were yesterday gold sells off to about 1796 the fund begins at about 9 30 p.m eastern time quite an acceleration we're up about 15 dollars off those lows at 1809 the price of gold silver up one penny but off the lows as well, the lows last night at about 9 o'clock, 1940, we're trading about 1959. Notes and bonds, we're getting some higher price and lower yield. The 10-year up two ticks at 139.17, the 30-year up six ticks at 180.13. We're looking at a 10-year yield right now, right above 0.60%, coming in at 0.604% for that 10-year. And we'll start things off. It is earnings season. BlackRock out with their numbers. We have housing starts as well, just out at 8.30 a.m., pretty much right in line. 1.186 million in June. 1.169 was the expected number. BlackRock out with their earnings. Profits jumped 21% on fixed income boost. Quite a number in terms of assets. They ended the quarter with 7.32 trillion in assets. The asset manager's fixed income funds took in 60 billion dollars 60.27 cash management business 24.2 billion net income rising to 1.21 billion dollars over the last 90 days blk is their symbol you see we're trading higher from 566 yesterday markets up as well though but you got blackrock at about 575 we got to get to Netflix. Why not pull up the chart first? Quite a number last night. Netflix falls right out of bed. We're looking at a five minute bar. They come out with the earnings at four o'clock and one second, and you drop from 527 to 449. You were approaching $80 in the red on that move. We've climbed a bit, paired some of the losses to get into what Netflix actually said. Jumping over to earnings miss weak subscriber guidance. The real key there, I mean, they added a lot of subscribers. Uh, global paid net subscriber additions, 10.09 million versus 8. 0.26 million that's coming off adding 15 million 18 million something last quarter on the first quarter that we had the covid quarantine shutdown uh but nonetheless next quarter where are their numbers because next quarter here we go 2.5 million net subscriber additions for the third quarter analysts were looking for more than 5 million so they just added 10 million subscribers in the last 90 days and they said but the next 90 days uh we're gonna hit like 25 percent of that number at 2.5 that is quite a slowdown. Paid subscribers added uh, only once has Netflix been under about 5 million for the quarter. That's what they said they're going to do in this coming quarter. Also in there, they promoted Ted Sarandos, their code to co-CEO. So he is in charge of content. What's his official uh, chief content officer? So he's in charge of all the original production, one of the biggest players in Hollywood with the budget that he has to produce original content. Looks like he is next in line to be the CEO and succeed Reed Hastings. At some point, he is named co-CEO. But the market, all they cared about was the fact that over the next 90 days when they report, the 90 days we're in right now, they're only going to add about 2.5 million subscribers. Uh, a lot of stocks hit on that number. You back it up to Disney, you see the sell-off right on their numbers. Maybe, I don't know. It's tough to estimate you know what's going to happen here these are brand new players in terms of disney competing with netflix disney just launched in november you know they are pretty new uh and normally it'd be like oh boy are people not has has everyone signed up for their streaming services but maybe part of the reason why 
The 90 days run right now is going to be difficult for Netflix. Is because Disney's stealing some of that action. We'll find out when Disney comes out with their earnings early next month. All right, what else we got going on? So the Twitter hack, a few more details. 130 people targeted in the hacks that hijacked the accounts of, as we've seen, many, many famous celebrities with that blue check mark. I believe it was something like $120,000, $140,000 that was taken over 400 different people, sent Bitcoin. Twitter, though, pretty remarkable when you look at what happened and the charge back. I mean, we're basically back to where Twitter was trading at at 3 o'clock on Wednesday before the hack started, which was after the close uh, on Wednesday evening. You see the sell off from 3550 to 3315, and we basically got it all back 3538, like it never happened before. Checking in on some social media, Facebook shares. I mean, you're pretty close to all time highs on Facebook, right? What happened to the ad boycott? We were just up there this week, making all time highs at 25015. We're about 10 bucks off that level, gonna open at 241.45. What else we have happening? Cruise ships. So in case you didn't know, now is not a good time to go on a cruise ship in America. There you have it, folks. Uh, the CDC bans, I laugh, but you know, you gotta use some common sense, okay? I was saying to friends yesterday, so they, CDC had a no sale order, that was gonna expire July 24th. They've extended that through September, okay? So you're talking about the next two months. We are on July 17th. July, August, September, they're saying at least for the next two months, no US cruises. Folks, if you don't know that yourself, okay, there's heck of a deals out there, I'm sure, but the free market, if it ever would have allowed it, and the scary thing is, is I think it would have. I think you, you, know, you could almost make an argument that if you had them, people would somehow get on them. Probably the worst place you can be in terms of a cruise ship. Um, the, the statistics of how many cruises had been hit, I was trying to find the number. I mean, uh, yeah, here we go. These data have revealed, they're looking at data and cruise ships, okay? A, a total of 99 outbreaks on 123 different cruise ships, meaning there were 123 cruise ships that were out there as this was happening before everything shut down. And of those cruise ships, 80% of them had COVID on it, okay? So either way, cruise ships, you know, not surprising that they have been hit especially hard, even off that exuberance you got. June 8th, up to 25 bucks. We're gonna open 15 territory. I mean, look at this drop off from where we were even on Wednesday. Up at 18, we're gonna open 15 for Carnival, Royal Caribbean, from 60 down to 50, Norwegian, from 1886 down to 15, 19 and change. Checking in on some of the airlines. American, 1255, Delta Airlines, 2745. Let's take a look at some of the FANG stocks. We get the NQ futures up 109. Amazon right now back above 3000 at 3001. Microsoft shares trading higher 20480. And Apple shares, why not? We'll check in on it. 38780. Taking a look at the VIX. 26. 26 handle on that VIX as we're above 3200. And the SPs, to put things in some context, the lows that we had going back to June 5th. 23.54, the lows we had in the VIX, July 6th, 24.92. We'll see where we end up on that. All right, S&P's taking a look. Hanging tough, up 20 points. We got a little bit of a boost um, in the lead up to the program even. The run begins even 7.45. Stay tuned, folks. We've got lots to go over. Friday morning, we'll be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 the prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We're looking at pre-market session highs right now. S&P's 22 points in the green, 32.16. We look for Friday trading. We're right up there within about 16 or 17 points of the highs we had on Wednesday in the market. S&P's, that high, 32.33. Taking a look at the different indices and where we fare. I mean, you look at the NASDAQ, right? The high on Monday, 11,058. We're currently sitting 10,624. The Dow, 27,063, sitting about 360 points below that level, 26,695. All right, as I mentioned, still earnings season, J.B. Hunt, J.B.H.T., there it is. Out with their numbers, we'll pull up the news in a moment, but the trucking business going well right now, up from 132 to 137 pre-market on their numbers. Jumping over to the numbers, in fact, quarterly earnings of a buck 14 a share, well above the estimate of 80 cents a share. Revenue also beating. Following the release release of those results, release of those results, uh, getting an upgrade as well from Deutsche Bank. JB Hunt trading higher. All right, what else we have? PPG Industries, so paints and coatings. Quarterly earnings, 98 cents. They beat as well, trading higher. Revenue higher as well. Increase in do-it-yourself painting projects by people remaining at home. Yeah, um, some of these stocks, folks. All right, PPG, there's the action there from about 115 to 120. I mean, I was taking a look at Lowe's this morning. Lowe's is a powerful stock. Uh, quite an opportunity down here at the Lowe's on this company, the Lowe's of Lowe's. Uh, the low of 60 on March 19th, we're now sitting at one. Somewhere between 143.52 and 146 is the bid ask this morning on Lowe's making, I mean, this is just, there was no pullback almost in this stock from $60 to 142. So not surprising to see some of these do-it-yourself, uh, whether it's painting, whatever it is, at-home goods stores. All right, other news out there, check in. What do we got? Lending Tree raised their outlook. Not surprising, the 30-year mortgage. Lending tree, look at that rebound, right, from 135. We're going to open above 330 today, folks. Before I jump away, I mean, some of these, right, housing, it was like, what's going to happen? Well, guess what? Rates went through the floor, and people are refinancing and purchasing homes, and you got lending tree jumping up to 332. Okay, so the next thing on the agenda is going to be the political battle. It turns out to be uh, what happens next in terms of stimulus 
You got, you know, we got weekly jobless claims yesterday, 1.3 million. Pelosi out there, Speaker of the House, saying the next aid bill will cost at least 1.3 trillion, but that's not enough. We're gonna have the $600 unemployment benefits. That's gonna be expiring at the end of this month, all of that. I mean, nothing really has gotten too dire yet because of the fiscal stimulus that the government passed, um, keeping everything alive, making sure people just weren't cut off immediately. The whole economy shut down in some areas, especially whether it's retail, right, dining, all of that, just gone overnight, travel. Uh, so that battle, it's about to start act, uh, firing up and look for that to maybe hit the markets. <sighs> Talk about hitting the markets, the numbers for COVID, remarkable, 77,000, new record. That was up, uh, we just set the record, I believe, at 67 or something like that. Um, either way, the lives were approaching 1,000, the highest since June 10th, okay? Florida setting record numbers above 150, I believe. South Carolina, Texas, all biggest one-day spikes for deaths. Not good numbers, folks. You pull up the Florida curve, I mean, it's stark numbers. You look at these death totals, right? We were just sitting at a seven-day seven average of 34 on June 22nd. You can even say we're sitting at a seven-day average of July 4th, 45. We've now doubled that at the seven-day average of 95. You see the cases, you gotta watch out, folks. Hopefully we get this thing under control. JP Morgan says Chinese consumers are in reasonably good shape despite miss in retail sales. So the bank's out with their earnings this week. JP Morgan talking about China. China, um, China today talking about Asia, the markets. You have the Nikkei down about three tenths percent. Shanghai up one tenth. That was after getting pummeled, right? Um, and HSI up about half a percent out there. We talked about the yields right at about six tenths percent. That of course hitting the mortgage market in a big way. You saw lending tree, uh, 10 year sitting at 0.6. Look, taking a look at these notes. I mean, we are right up, right? 139.17, this was our recent high, 139.22. You put this on a daily, pretty interesting action. Definitely at the upper end of this range as we're ticking up here each time we've gotten there, you could say we've traded down about a point to the lower end of about 138.10, 138.15 maybe, but we're sitting right up there with yields in that 10 year, pretty remarkable, 6 tenths percent for 10 years you're talking about. All right, what else we got going on folks? Head on over to the front page of TFNN. My first week doing my new newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options Report. I come out with a full report Monday morning. I got a bunch of updates that I've done through this week. You gain access to all of it. I will have a full report out Monday. I may have an update out later today, depending on what happens in the markets. I'm gonna have a long-term section, building kind of a portfolio, whether it's retirement, whether it's just long-term, less volatile plays in the market, value investing for the long run. I'm also gonna have short-term plays, options, kind of everything that I look at just in my own trading and my own life. Right now, you can subscribe and you can save 50% off the monthly price, folks. Comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Please just give it a shot. Request that money-back guarantee if you're not happy with it. And I appreciate the opportunity. Enter the promo code ROCKET, R-O-C-K-E-T, add that code. There's your, there's your discount, 4850, and that will stay with you for as long as you remain a subscriber. Charter membership, you lock in that rate forever. Check it out on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, what else we got going on? Let's check in on some of the commodities. Crude oil, just like notes, crude just kind of sitting up at this 41 level. You almost could say since June 8th, we reached a high of 40, 44. Been ticking up at that level, but holding up relatively well for the price of crude and gold reacting pretty well today. I got some trend line on there. Could say it's maybe broken that to the side. Let's remove that. But gold, it just might need to consolidate a little bit here. I mean. You back this out, it's been quite a run we've had from the March lows. I mean, look at these, this is a daily. You went in three days on March 20th from 1457 up to almost 1700. But even since then, we consolidate from April, you break out of that zone about a month ago, which is remarkable. June 18th, June 19th, we trade to a high of 1760. We're up about $47 from there, even 1807 in the price of gold. Jumping around to some of those banks with their earnings this week, JP Morgan. 
put it in a shorter time frame. They really accelerated last Friday ahead of the earnings week. JP Morgan, strong numbers, but these banks really not accelerating where you might expect with the numbers they delivered in trading. Goldman Sachs, similar story, right? You spike higher. Again, we're sitting with that 10 year yield, though, at six tenths. No matter how well you do in trading during those volatile times, things have normalized. You're not going to be able to make the amount of money they made on bond trading when rates were just going bananas. Um, they're going to do okay, but not like maybe they did. You see the reaction. Goldman, we're $12 off that high you had early Wednesday on Goldman. And uh, Morgan Stanley, I want to take a look at. Reacting pretty well yesterday and holding up well at 53 for Morgan Stanley. All right, taking a look at the S&Ps as we come into this next break. We're currently sitting up 17 points, 32.12, that recent high of 32.33. A little bit of an acceleration, even since about 9, 8 a.m. from 32.05. We have 40 minutes to go until the opening bell. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back in three minutes. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by Bam! as well as whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. It's Friday. It's 8.55 in the morning, 35 minutes to go until that opening bell. Stay tuned. we got our man Larry Pesavento coming up live at 9 o'clock, live programming all day at TFNN, folks. Right now, S&P's up about 17 points. Pretty strong morning. You back this out? 
for some context, we've kind of just been hanging here for all of Thursday, tight trading range. We haven't seen a tight trading range like 10 points. I mean, here's some big moves, but we're looking at 15 minute bars, the lower end of the range with a little bit of volatility from maybe 3195, the upper end of the range all day yesterday. You're talking about 30. 205, give or take, this bar, that's actually after the market closed when you see the drop off of Netflix and we just got above. Any action that we saw yesterday, folks, in that S&P reaching a high of 32.17, the high yesterday at 3.30 of 32.12, right where we're sitting at right now in that S&P. Jumping back to some of the commodities, gold hanging out at about 18.07 after its recent run up. Natural gas, we got inventory numbers yesterday. Look at this drop off, right, from 180, to 170, some volatility in natural gas. Watch out for that volatility, folks, as it persists in a big way. All right, checking in on some other big names. Tesla shares 15.15 this morning. Checking in on Amazon, still above 3,000, 3,005. And we got to take a look at Netflix. Should be an interesting open on Netflix, folks. Uh, I joked with friends yesterday. I said, yeah. At first, I said, you know, um, Tom and Jason, Tom had Jason uh, Path on the program last night. That aired kind of right before this program, and I'm listening to that, getting ready for the show, and they were talking about Netflix, and he's saying, you know, it went from three, 370 or 320 to 527 yesterday, right, for the calendar year 2020, and you were coming into this year at full employment, everything is the best thing it could be in the economy. I mean, the transition to online streaming, cutting the cord well on its way, and you had Netflix firing on all cylinders at about 370. And meanwhile, COVID comes and you're worth almost double that. There was room for a pullback. But also, in this market, I hear that stocks only go up. No, we'll see. But look at this. I mean, Netflix, we're $40 off the low at $491. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pezzamento coming up live with Trade What You See. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with Tom. Have a great Friday.